Hi, boys and girls. I'm really hungry, so I decided to eat my lunch right now. Hey, Miss D. What do you have for lunch today? Hmm, let's check. <gasps> what? Oh, no! What are you doing in there? Blue ate my lunch! Blue ate- Oh! <gasps> You're in trouble! Naughty dog! Oh, Blue, you are such a naughty dog. I can't believe you'd eat Miss D's lunch. That is so not cool. All right, so what do you have up on your wall today? Ooh, more organic or freeform shapes. Cool, you have a leaf. That's a good idea. I think you're right. I think we should totally make a leaf drawing today. So let's do it. Yay, fall. Woo, leaf drawing. For today's project, you will need one piece of white paper, a permanent marker, watercolors, or crayons, or markers, or colored pencils, or something that uh, can color. All right, so I have my white piece of paper, and it is in the landscape orientation, which is side to side. I have my marker. I'm going to start at a corner, go from one corner to the next, a straight line. I am going to keep going over my line to make it a bit more bold. So you see, when I'm making my lines bold, I slowly draw over them so they're nice and neat looking. I get a little bit thicker at one end to kind of show that this there's a stem. Okay. So, you guys know that I like not smooth, pretty lines. It takes me a while to make them not so pretty. So I'm going to start at the top, and I'm going to come almost ziggity-zaggity, a little bit here and there, little hiccups, around and end a little bit up off of my stem. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to make that little ziggity, hiccupy type of a line. And I'm going to have it come all the way down to meet up where my other side left off. So, um... We want to make sure that these lines meet towards the bottom end of our stem, but if they're not perfectly uh, matched up, that's all right. I am just trying to make sure I take up a lot of the space of the paper. So now what you see me doing is I'm just making these lines nice and thick, make them a little more eye-catching. So I'm slowly going over them, making them nice and thick. And once I am done with that, I'll start in the middle. So I'm going to stop talking. And you can watch me make these lines nice and thick. All right, so my lines are nice and thick. Now I'm going to be going in the middle, and I'm going to be breaking off from the middle. I'm going to be having a line that's kind of diagonal that goes towards the edge, and I'm going to separate my paper into different sections like this. Okay, I'm not necessarily adding veins because I'm going to be adding some fancy designs in the middle of each section, but I'm trying to keep them consistent with thickness. Okay, so breaking them up. I don't have them super close together. I want them to be big enough spaces. So make sure you're balancing that out a little bit. And essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding pretty intricate little lines, little line patterns inside of each section. So we want to make sure we have enough space for that. Okay, so let's talk about what a Zen Tangle is. A Zen Tangle, like I said earlier, is little intricate lines that you make, and it's kind of like in a pattern. So you start off adding something, um, and you re keep repeating what you are doing, 
and it creates Zentangle. So you can Google search Zentangle ideas and they can give you some different patterns. So I just did that and here is an example of one. So you start with these crisscross lines, add these weird little curved elements, start filling them in, and it shows you what that finished product will look like at the bottom right side. So each one you find has a different pattern. So in each section of the leaf that we separated, come up with a different Zentangle idea for each section. So here's an example of a leaf that has all these different Zentangles filling up each section. Different types of Zentangles, some are thick, some are dark, and it's kind of carrying your eye outward. So there's all these different ideas you can do, um, but really if you get stuck, search up Zentangle ideas and you can really just make them up as you go. So uh, here is my paper and I'm going to actually start making up some Zentangles as I go. So you see me fixing some lines here, but in one of the categories, let's say I just want to make some diagonal little lines. So I make these little lines and I'm trying to get them close together and the third one I'm going to make thick. So line, line, thick line line, line, thick line. So like I said earlier, it repeats and repeats, okay? So that's just one pattern for one section. Then in the next section I go, I'm going to try to think of a different pattern. So I suggest thinking about different types of lines you can add or different types of shapes that repeat. Some of the space you can fill in with your marker to make it black and bold. Other spaces, you can make the lines and designs a little bit more spread out to give it a little bit more lightness, okay? So this one I think I, I just chose to do a triangle. And I'm going to do it again until I run out of space. Then I'll just fill it in black in the middle, okay? So, easy squeezy. I'm going to zoom, zoom, no. I'm going to speed up, so I am not working this fast. Um, but you're going to see me make these designs super quick and take your time, do your best work. I believe in you.
Okay, so I'm about done with my Zentangle leaf. I have filled every single section, trying to keep the designs a bit different with contrasting lines and shapes and thickness and darkness here and there. Um, I did repeat some of my designs at the top and at the bottom, I like how it kind of carries right through. But what I need to think about next is coloring it. Do I want it colored or do I want it just black and white? Um, that's up to you. So if you want it colored, I'm going to paint mine in because I like using watercolors when I do things like this. I'm going to use paint to fill it in with fall colors or warm colors. So you have like red and orange and yellow. So I've chosen to fill in that space with warm colors. And then on my outside, I will use cool colors. So um, you don't really need to use watercolor, but I like watercolor. Well, watercolor is fun. So if you have watercolor sets at home, go for it. Um, you can use crayon or colored pencils. Or if you really feel like you have enough boldness, you can just keep it black and white. Go team. All right, so I'm speeding up. This is me painting my leaf in. Um, again, you don't have to do this. So, um, make sure you are sharing your artwork with me on Seesaw. I love seeing your work from week to week. So, on this one, make sure you take your time. You're making nice, pretty lines. And it is super helpful if you are using a permanent marker. I keep seeing a lot of pencil drawings submitted. So, make sure you uh, try to acquire a permanent marker to help you with these types of designs. All right, so make sure you post it on Seesaw and enjoy watching me paint for a while. Yay!